Good evening. It is Monday, February 26, 2018. It is 7 o'clock. I call the second meeting of the month of February to order. Uh, my name is Jeff Matthews, President of Speedway Town Council. Uh, joining me this evening are uh, Eileen Fisher. Good evening. Vice President David Lindsay. Good evening. To his left, Councilor Gary Rakes. Good evening. Town Manager Jacob Blaisdell. Good evening, Speedway. And our legal counsel, Bob Clutter. How do you do? Like uh, this evening's agenda has been posted, and we are going to be following that this evening with, with an addition uh, towards the end. Uh, we'll get that uh, on. It'll actually be item number eight. Uh, but item number one uh, is the Pledge of Allegiance. Will you please stand? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item number two, the approval of town council meeting minutes uh, dated February 12, 2018. Uh, those were in your packets. Are there any uh, questions regarding those? No. Hearing none, we will approve those as presented. Item number three, minutes of the memorandum of the February 12, 2018 executive session. Those two were included in packets. Any questions regarding the memorandum? Hearing none, those also will be approved. Item number four, ordinance number 1303, an additional appropriation ordinance for the town of Speedway for certain capital outlays of the school town of Speedway. We'd like to have Ken Hole please come forward, please. Good evening, counselors, and thank you for considering this request for an additional appropriation. Uh, background, uh, the school town of Speedway has a rainy day fund of $708,604. Uh, in our best plans, we were accumulating funds to possibly look at an addition to Newby Elementary School's enrollment grows, and enrollment is growing, but uh, we are a little ahead in that. Uh, at this time, we've had a significant change in the state. The state of Indiana has uh, decreed that all schools will do all statewide testing online beginning in Mar February, March of next year. This causes us concern. Our students generally, especially in grades K-8, work on a more traditional program based on things like textbooks and paper and pencil. We've had a little bit of success and we've tested with paper and pencil. And next year we're not going to have that option. And so we, uh, we worked very quickly this fall to, to work with our teachers. We have at our high school level, our students already do a great deal of their work on computer, on Chromebooks. In fact, they can put, they can create, write, and drop a, an assignment in Dropbox for their teachers faster than I could write these remarks for you. They're so good at it. But that's not really, although our kids are great users, they're not proficient at the technology. And we have a great fear that if our students have to work on technology that they've never used before, we might not be testing on what they know in mathematics and English, but rather how well they can manipulate a computer. And frankly, we don't want to put our faith in guessing, dropping, and clicking. And So we believe the best way we get these students ready is in grades three through six, elementary classrooms, which are tested under the I step now, I learn, and seventh and eighth language and arts and mathematics. The best thing we can do is equip each of these classrooms with a set of personal computers and a charging station and prepare our teachers over the summer to teach them like the difference between how you and I used to write six times seven equals 42. On a keyboard, it's six star seven equal. You, you have to just prepare them for those things. And so to purchase a classroom set of computers and a charging station, and get all of that prepared is a, approximately a $300,000 bill. But likewise, if you're going to add over 900 computers to your elementary schools, you've got to upgrade your network. And so we're looking at increases in, and replacements of servers to actually compute the data, routers and switches to make the changes, and the wireless access points that help students work at their desk. 
We estimate that with the addition of E-rate funds to be about $100,000. So to be fully prepared, we want to ask for, we're asking for an additional appropriation of $400,000 to put the, these devices and equipment in the hands of our students in August. To do that in August, the school board passed, a res, or in our case, a resolution uh, asking for the additional appropriation. We're hoping that you can support this ordinance and then we will take the numbers and the findings to the Department of Local Government Finance and hopefully have all purchase and everything in line by April 1 so we can go on the market to purchase the equipment. So that's our goal. We're asking and hoping that you can support that. Mr. President, I move that we approve ordinance uh, 1303 as presented to us. Second. Third. It's been moved and seconded <laughs> to approve Ordinance 1303. Uh, is there any discussion from the audience? Any from council? Just a quick question. Um, is it, how will the students take the test when, when we get to iLearning? In, we, at this point, we will see our students, these, these devices, commonly called Chromebooks, yeah. I hate to put a, a name on something like that, We'll have four gig of memory and they'll literally be able to open the, them up and work directly in their classrooms, although we will maintain a schedule for supervision. Uh, now, one, one thing I'm glad you, if I can, one more comment. We are not becoming a one-to-one -one school district where we hand students, one of, we pay for and hand students one of these devices. These are the teacher and the classroom's devices. Occasionally a student may need to check one out for the evening like a library book and we might allow that. Uh, but what we, we've done this, if you talk to our high school students, they've been doing this in English and math classes and social studies now for five years. And we have five-year-old devices that are still working properly because when you tell the teacher it's their property, they take care of it. If you hand it to students, you have to put tracking devices on them and you find them in other states sometimes and they'll never get them back. What's the transit? So, so they can t they can open these up, <clears throat> access a wireless access point, and go directly to work. And we hope they're doing that a lot before we ever get to test time. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Ordinance passes five four zero. Um, Ken, before you go, uh, any early indication on how the scholarships for Speedway went on Saturday? Well, that, that's, uh, because, you know, I think I gave a commercial for that at the she State did. of the Town. And I was told uh, at about 5 o'clock on Saturday evening that they raised the highest amount ever on the first day, $21,567, which I th or it might be some number close to that, but it eclipsed by nearly $1,000 what they raised last year, and so their sites are having their highest level when they call again on Saturday. It's a, if, if you just go in there and watch these, these kids are having, you know, they're having too good of a time and they enjoy it. And, and they, we, when it started, and I wasn't here, they talked about doing it at the local bank. And then when we, when we lost those phones, the kids went out and literally kids sat in my office and made phone calls. But now they, we've had a way to get all the kids back together so they're working together. It's a, in a day when you think of the challenges, no more home lines to call, no more Speedway directory on who to call, you know, to get this kind of a turnout is an absolute, it's great for the kids. It's great for the people who get scholarships. But it's so great for the community that they continue to do this for, for them. Now, you left a little early, so I, too, gave a little pitch during my, my spiel. And, and my spiel was there was a former Speedway student, well, a classmate of mine, uh, who was texting me during your speech, by the way. How dare he? But, watching on YouTube. Smart student. And, it was, and he was watching it on YouTube. <laughs> and he said, hey, if you say my name and my company name, I'll give you $50 every time you say that. How many did you get in? Two. So Good. he owes us $100, and he knows that. Brian Ritchie with Dreamweaver Carpet. Now that's another one. So, that <laughs> sounds like three. There you go. That was What's Brian Ritchie with Dreamweaver Carpet? That is correct. That is X. What did you say his name was? <laughs> Brian Ritchie. Okay. Dreamweaver Carpet. But, uh, um, you know, we're shameless about what yes, we, we do. No one, would, no one would ever, but, but make no mistake, it's because of the community seeing and understanding this 
that more people we we now get envelopes of people we didn't solicit and I say we come on it's the it's the the directors of that I just in some small way contribute a little bit of time but they uh, they do a great thing yeah but ideas like that I think that should be a challenge and more people ought to look for making sure their businesses become sponsors of that I think that's because, a great because idea. I'll, I'll be shameless about one other thing the bottom line is for the fifth year in a row that little company called Allison's made another $5,000 wow. donation Fantastic. to scholarships at Speedway. And that in no small part are because of alumni like Missy Sauer, Missy King, mm -hmm. and Tom Rost, and so many other people. So we're, we're blessed. We're just Absolutely. blessed in this community to have that. And, and to that end, if you'll excuse me, since you've already acted, I'm going to head back over to the school where I think we've got awards going on. In the Excellent. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Uh, before we move hey, on, Mr. President. the board for saying yes. Uh, yep. Can I talk to you tomorrow about getting the paperwork? To sure. Help? Yes, sir. Thanks. All right. Pretty helpful town manager well, there. <laughs> I just want to clarify, just more for the record, that you guys are agreeing to go ahead and pass it on first reading as the ordinance is ready to go. Was that correct? That was correct. correct. Okay. All right. Yes. yes. And as it was unanimous, a second is not required. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. Item number five, appointment to boards and commissions. Uh, we have an open uh, position on the Speedway Library Board. Mr. President, I would uh, nominate uh, Jennifer Tiffany for this open position. And Mr. President, I'll make a motion that nominations be closed. Second. It's been moved and seconded to close the nominations for the Speedway Library Board. Any discussion from the audience? Any from the council? Hearing none, uh, we would like to welcome Jennifer Tiffany to the Speedway Library Board. I would like to make one comment uh, to thank um, um, Carolyn, Stewart. Uh, Carolyn Stewart. Thank you. Uh, she and her husband, Bob, if you totaled up the years, it probably goes back 30 years, 25 anyway. For the years they served on the library board and so many other ways they serve. So I just want to thank Carolyn Stewart for her service. Absolutely. Uh, very much appreciated. Absolutely. Okay, item number six, approval of the agreement with Wessler Engineering for on-call services. Uh, Jacob, would you like to take this one? Yeah, um, so this is uh, effectively a renewal of the on-call services agreement we've already had. Uh, we use Wessler for uh, a lot of different engineering services. Um, this is this has been uh, amended slightly from last year to now say consulting, so we've broadened it the, the scope a little bit uh, to give a little more flexibility. But um, particularly with with water and wastewater, they do a lot of work and help us out. So um, this is just for minor small projects that come up uh, on the day to day. Of course, if something major were happening, we would enter into a separate larger agreement with them for approval to council. But these are uh, just to give some flexibility so that our our staff can get things done day to day. Um, we'd ask for your approval. I, I might suggest that authorizing Jacob to sign on behalf as since since there's no particular limit on the uh, agreement and it is in Jacob's name as the town manager. So it, I think in the past we've limited it to 20,000. Yes. And the agreement may not say it, it, say that but that's uh 25 25,000. 25, okay. So Whatever amount you guys deem appropriate, you know, we can kind of do a check-in. But So I'll make a motion that we approve the agreement with Wessler Engineering for on-call services uh, to a not for a, uh, an amount not to an exceed, amount not to exceed 25000 for each incident of on-call uh, on emergency um, and that that be reflected in the agreement uh, once the final draft is done and leave that to you and Jeff to, to, to manage. But... We approve that uh, here this evening. Okay. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the agreement with Wessler Engineering for on-call services for not to exceed twenty-five thousand. Uh, is there any discussion from the audience? Uh, any any other discussion from council? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Is approved four zero. Item number seven, approval of agreement with Keyser Engineering for on-call services. Jacob? 
similar concept. I won't go through it again. We typically do um, road projects with Keyser Consulting, um, but same concept, smaller one-off projects. Uh, this agreement does have an embedded amount of ten thousand dollars, but not to exceed. Correct. We'd ask for your approval. Any motion? Uh, I'll move to approve the agreement with Keyser Engineering for uh, on-call services in the way that was just described by our town manager. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the agreement with Keyser Engineering for on-call services to not uh, not to exceed ten thousand dollars. Is there any uh, comments from the audience? Any from council? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? It's approved for zero. Uh, item number eight. Um, this is a recommendation to approve contracting for legal, legal services with Fagery, Baker, and Daniels. Um, I'd like to have uh, Gary, um, Gary Rakes uh, lead the discussion. Sure. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, as we got to the end of last year, uh, we start, started to recognize as, as uh, our redevelopment effort was continuing to plan and move uh, with activities and options out in the gateway area. That's basically the, the shopping center to the west um, uh, all the way to 465. We recognized that uh, investors uh, interested in doing multi-use projects, uh, one of the things that they, they um, really need to, to, to sell those, those projects are three-way liquor licenses. We've uh, had quite a bit of success on Main Street and near Main Street with those types of investments and and uh, we, we, we had some additions to our Main Street redevelopment area a few, uh, several years ago now. But uh, population, excuse me, the state of Indiana limits the number of uh, licenses based on population and unless there's a, a special uh, uh, condition whereby the state legislature can grant more. So um, uh, knowing that we're, we're pursuing investors for this area, uh, both through redevelopment as well as uh, our town manager and the council that reviews it occasionally. Um, I'm suggesting that we, we uh, work with this, uh, this legal firm for legal services to help us uh, work with the state legislature to uh, obtain additional licenses for th three-way licenses for this gateway area specifically. Um, and I would suggest that we do that uh, in, in an amount not to exceed $10,000 specific to this project and that um, uh, we put a, a, the first step being to put a uh, written process or a written proposal in place between Fager, Baker, Daniels, and the town and uh, the specifications for the, the project and that uh, our town manager, our redevelopment director, and president of the council have authority to execute that and move forward with it. Okay. So that is actually, uh, so what I just said would be a motion and uh, I'd appreciate it if someone else would consider seconding it. I'll second that. <clears throat> it's been moved and seconded to approve a recommendation uh, for contracting uh, legal services with uh, Fagery, Baker, and Daniels. Uh, is there any discussion from the audience? Any additional from council? I just have one quick question for uh, our attorney. We're fine to add this to the agenda? Yes, you are. Okay. So we're within our right to do that? As, as we're doing, obviously. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for the clarification. Uh, any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? This pass for zero. Item number nine, approval of claims and utility adjustments. Uh, and the clerk treasurer's report. Well, Monty is out sick today. He's he's got what's been going around uh, the circles of town, and and uh, we wish him well. I'm sure he's watching uh, at home on pins and needles, hoping that we pass these. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I will I will say that uh, the uh, claims are dated uh, from February 10th to February 23rd. Mr. President, I move that we approve the claims presented to us. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the claims as presented by me. Uh, is, there, <laughs> is there any discussion from the audience? Any from council? Hearing none, uh, I ask for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? 
Those are approved four zero. And the claims, utility. I'm sorry, utility adjustments. See, that's why Monty's always here to do it. Uh, looks pretty straightforward. Mr. Mr. President, President. Make a, oh, go ahead. Move that we approve the adjustments presented to us <laughs> by President. I second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the utility just, uh, adjustments as presented. Is there any uh, discussion from the audience? Any from council? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Those pass 4-0. And Monty is not here to give his report, but we do wish him a speedy recovery. Um, report from the town manager, Jacob. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'm going to start off by uh, asking for a concurrence from council on something. I was approached by the organizers of the REV fundraiser that takes place at the Motor Speedway every year. Uh, it's a fundraiser for IU Health. They, as part of the fundraiser, have entertainment and, and live music. Uh, we have an ordinance on our books that restricts that until 11 o'clock at night, and it being a festive Saturday evening, they have requested uh, to see if they could go until midnight um, before uh, we would ask them to, to shut things down. Um, speaking with our attorney, uh, we can go ahead and grant this approval on concurrence as long as everyone's comfortable with it. Um, so uh, the evening is May 5th, and we would like to ask uh, to grant an exception to the REV fundraiser um, for that evening until midnight. I, I concur. I concur. I agree. I concur. Okay, very great. Thank you. Okay. Um, getting into the report, uh, thank you to everybody that attended the State of the Town this past Saturday. Um, I was kind of surprised how many people yeah. showed up with the, the rain. We had, we had a pretty gross, um, rainy wet cold February morning um, but appreciated seeing all the folks out there if you missed it it is out there on YouTube so you can uh, watch it in all of its replay gl glory um, at that if you if you happen to see it or the video uh, you saw that uh, we announced the uh, war memorial that's going to go up on Main Street and uh, that's that's a really exciting project we will have a formal press release for that but um, Steve Arisman, uh brought that to my attention kind of not too long after I had started as town manager um, and he's been working really hard to make that happen so um, that's going to be a great project obviously it's going to clean up some blight on Main Street and replace it with something really um, really worthwhile for that space so so look forward to having that started uh, and also on the construction end of things being no trail uh, we're getting ready to uh, start that at the beginning of April probably already seeing some signs going up about where roads are going to start closing um, we're, we're, we're putting things into motion and um, we'll obviously be asking for folks cooperation and patience through that process again we're going to start construction at the Main Street area and then start heading west from there so that we're out of there by the time um, May festivities roll around and then last but not least Please report potholes. Uh, the number is 317 246 4141. I had somebody call me today, which is fine too if you want to call 4100. Um, I, I'll, I'll take your call uh, or leave a voicemail and I'll forward it to the right people that can, uh, that can get that taken care of. So, again, appreciate everyone reaching out. I think our team's done a pretty good job of staying ahead of it. It's been a tough year and it's going to continue to be with, with these extreme temperature changes. It's just not good for the roads. But uh, again, report what you see and uh, when the crew is out there, they will stop by and fix it for you. That's all I have. I want to make a quick comment off of uh, what you just said regarding potholes uh, and regarding last week. We had how many people, how many, uh, how many guys were out last week on, from the flu? Oh, uh, well, I know we, it was, we had five guys out today, so we had three guys in. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a heavy, heavy, yep. heavy chunk of uh, manpower. So yep. thank you, though, to those that uh, have been braving it and get well the rest of you. So yeah. anything else? That's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jacob. A uh, report from our town attorney, Bob Clutter. Mr. President, I have no report tonight. Another stellar report. Thank you. <laughs> I do my best. Thank you. 
<coughs> report from our uh, council mem members. I'll start with Eileen Fisher. I have nothing this evening. Thank you. Councillor Gary Rakes. A couple things. Uh, uh, while we were talking about liquor licenses earlier, I know in the last meeting Dave uh, mentioned the um, Board of Zoning Appeals had heard a request for uh, a potential liquor store at 30th and High School. And I think it's important to, to mention that uh, we're really strategic about uh, th this whole idea of where we, where we want a liquor store or where we want to have restaurants that have three-way permits and, and other things so that you know, we're creating you know, multi-use uh, opportunities throughout our town. And uh, where uh, a few weeks ago we're working to maintain an area right next to some homes that, that um, uh, stays uh, and, and keeps moving, you know, because it's, it's really not a multi-use area. Whereas in the shopping center and to the west of high, high School Road and so forth, we are trying to, to create a more multi-use multi, multi -use environment there. So I, I, I thank Dave for his work and others that attended that meeting. But I just want to clarify kind of the strategy or the tactics behind what we're doing, doing there. Uh, second of all, I want to thank um, Jacob for mentioning the War Memorial. That's a great project, and lots of people have get, given money and uh, time to, to move that forward. Um, that's going to be another game changer for Main Street. Um, met with some folks from um, the uh, Indiana Racing Memorial Association. I probably have those words all, all backed up, but uh, they they have a plaque, a couple placards here in Speedway, and they want to do more. And um, when I was telling them about the War Memorial that's going to go there, they just one of the placards they want to do without spilling the beans here is is a placard related to racing and those racers who were involved in the military at different different times and and you know if we would have multiple placards around town uh trails main street etc that, uh, that this would just be one more stop for them at the war memorial which uh the design of the war memorial is is not festive it's it's very uh, try, they're trying we're trying to make it private to where people that they honor that, that the folks who have given their lives and this memorial is about those who were killed in action uh, that we go to this space and we remember and, and give them tribute by just being uh, kind of sensitive to noise and some other things. So it's, we're going to protect that in that sense, but yet it'll be a great place for visitors who are seeing other parts of Main Street, other placards related to history, will see this history. So I'm very excited about that. So I want to make sure and, and tack on to what Jacob was talking about. And then second or third is the Lions Club breakfast is this Saturday. Um, and uh, that's another fundraiser uh, for, for that club, very similar to what Ken Hall was talking about, in turn, and, and we asked about with Dollars for Scholars. Uh, the Lions are a part of Dollars, or excuse me, Speedway Scholars, um, and uh, so many other ways the Lions serve. So uh, if you have the opportunity on Saturday, and I understand the weather is supposed to be fantastic, go eat some pancakes, uh, maybe a little sausage or bacon, and uh, uh, get it to uh, Get it, get it Saturday at, at the at uh, the high school. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Uh, Vice President David Lindsay. Uh, I just just one one clarification. I asked the question, but I don't think I expanded on why I asked it. Um, the lobbying agreement that we passed for the state or for the the liquor licenses that Gary is mentioning that could not be added to the next council meeting because. The session at the state ends before we meet again. Correct. Okay. So that that's why that was added to the agenda. It was something that came up uh, that Gary became aware of and others. So for the thousands watching at home, I just wanted to clarify that. That's all I have. <laughs> Thank you for the total transparency. Appreciate that. Um, I just have a couple things. Also, want to uh, thank those that uh, attended the State of the Town address, uh, those that watched it on YouTube, uh, including Brian Ritchie from Dreamweaver. That's now three hundred dollars. Um, also, the uh, the pancake breakfast uh, put on by the Lions Club. That's uh, from eight till noon. Um, so please come out and and join the uh, festivities. Uh, also, uh, the second meeting of March, which is March 26th, uh, due to uh, the spring break holiday, there's going to be quite a few people out of town. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to cancel uh, that meeting, which which by by law we're able to do, correct? Yeah, okay. absolutely. Uh, so we won't have quorum. Um, so we will be canceling uh, the second meeting of March. So. Uh, that's all I have. Um, 
with that, at 7.30, I call this meeting adjourned.